The following game contains adult themes. It does not contain explicit language, sexual content, horror or show violence. Choices matter, so please take your time. Player discretion is still advised. Please sign your name below, showing you understand and agree to endorse every decision you make. speak louder than words. Welcome to Trolley Problem Inc. Founded to help people travel safely across the nation. All our employees must show three core values. Responsibility, integrity and respect. With that in mind, let's start your training. There's a runaway trolley barreling down the railway tracks. On the tracks are five people unable to move. You're next to a lever. If you pull this lever, the trolley will switch to a different set of tracks. However, you notice there is a person on the other track. What do you do? Oh, so you're just gonna do nothing? Well, ah, I guess you're right. The more people who die, the better. Usually we don't expect candidates to kill someone on their first day, but we'll give you the benefit of the doubt on this one. Just think a little more before acting next time. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. This test will focus on the first principle, responsibility. Here's Polly. She's five years old. While she loves to play in the sand with her dolls, she dreams of looking after the world. Polly's destiny is to grow up to be a great doctor. More of us should take a leaf out of her book. A trolley is heading towards another five people. You're next to a lever. If you pull this lever, the trolley will derail and descend down a hill heading for the park's sand pit. You notice that Polly is in the sandpit, sculpting her dream hospital. What do you do? Are you not saving them just because they aren't as cute as Polly? I wonder if any of the five are children. Or maybe all of them. is an odd take on being responsible. The dictionary definition, to be the primary cause of something and so able to be blamed or credited for it. Are you to blame for those five deaths? The end justifies the means. The key to this test is integrity. This is Tyrone. He is a 30-year-old secretary at a law firm who enjoys binge-watching crime shows. Tyrone is a very large man. You don't really know anything else about him apart from the fact that he has a severe phobia of trains. Now we are upping the ante. You are on a bridge with Tyrone watching a trolley speeding towards five people again. You can only stop it by deliberately pushing Tyrone off the bridge, blocking its path. Do you push Tyrone off the bridge? Or let the train hit five people? Oh, 821 million people are starving in the world. Well, Tyrone will thank you. He's planning to binge watch a lot this week. to be the bearer of bad news, but 
I've just seen an ambulance arrive. I believe Tyrone has just had a heart attack due to the stress of it all. A cat has nine lives. Now for the final core value, respect. It seems we've run out of resources to continue your testing. I'm going to need you to go and grab some mannequins. You will need to take the next trolley, so don't get distracted by that dog. The trolley leaves in one minute. There is a dying dog down on the tracks. No trolleys will use that line today, so the dog will not be hit. You're in a rush. Do you kill the dog, putting it out of its misery, or leave it to die, cold and alone? Let nature take its course, don't listen to the yelps. I couldn't leave it there, to die alone. When you respect something, you're meant to care about its feelings and wishes. Instead, you just left it there to die. If you play with fire, you'll get burned. Oh, great. I've just heard those kids are back. They keep sneaking down onto the tracks. With all the training from this week, you should be able to decide a straightforward outcome for these reprobates. Just remember, respect, responsibility and integrity. Five trespassers have snuck down onto the trolley line even though signs warn them of the dangers. The trolley is currently heading for a co-worker. Do you let your co-worker die or sacrifice the delinquents? trespassers weren't there, you would change the pass, right? Oh, all that mess is going to end up in the same coffin. You killed a co-worker. All right, then I guess your results for the first week are in. I'll run these up the flagpole and see what the suits upstairs think. Dear sir or madam, we have been following your exemplar practice this week at Trolley Problem Inc. and would like to thank you for your hard work, especially when some challenging decisions had to be made. We would like to invite you to take employment at the Trolley Health Corporation, THC. This is a prestigious position and was created to help keep the public safe through all walks of life. The best laid plans go astray. It looks like you've impressed someone upstairs with last week's answers. You've been transferred to the Trolley Health Corporation, THC. THC is stoic, focusing more on justice, temperance, courage and wisdom. We'll start with justice. Today, you'll be in A&E. A young male has come in from a car accident and urgently needs a heart transplant. There's only one in the hospital, and this heart is scheduled to be given to an elderly man waiting upstairs. He will surely die without it. Who should get the heart? Sounds like his car may have caused the accident. News just in, the young male has alcohol in his blood. Was he driving? made an excellent choice. Well done. The elderly man deserved that heart much more. Oh, oh wait. Did you save the young guy? 
You can't win them all. You're late. The hospital is rammed. Every staff member has their hands full. So you're going to have to go out on the ward and help the sick, gross, decaying people. Remember, temperance. Restrain yourself and think it through. A patient has begged to be euthanized. Euthanasia is currently illegal. You will have to be the one who gives the lethal dose. You will need to look into their eyes and end their life. What do you do? The family will be thankful. They can still feel good about sending flowers. The patient's going to be in a lot of pain, just so you can feel in control. Keeping them alive and in pain is what the majority of gods would have wanted. Playing the long game. I see you. Be slow in choosing, but slower in changing. The last few days have been tough. It was only a week ago you were on the trolleys. Today should be easier. You have a choice to make which some people would see as a good problem to have. It's just going to take courage. You have five patients. Each needs a different organ, but no organs are available. A healthy young traveller comes in for a routine checkup. Their organs are compatible with all five dying patients. Do you kill the tourist and use their organs to save the five in desperate need? That's one life for five. Crikey, we're getting dark now. He, he's getting away. Don't you want to save the many? Is his life worth it? You let five people die today. You probably should have looked into their backgrounds. Looks like one was researching into improving vaccines. Hopefully that won't be an issue down the road. You can't make an omelette without breaking eggs. You have been promoted yet again. You now run the hospital. You've been asked to roll out a new vaccine in Central City. This vaccine will stop a large number of children from becoming severely ill, but you'll need to deal with their parents. We need your words of wisdom. Do you start a mandatory vaccination program among children to stop this endemic? Slight problem, clinical trial data suggest the vaccine will make one in five children severely ill, much worse than the virus itself. Tell me you're in charge of a hospital and an anti-vaxxer. How did you answer the trolley one again? Oh boy, you have angered those parents. A lot of messages coming in from a woman called Karen. Not sure if it's all the same person. Beggars can't be choosers. Your hospital is getting noticed. You're now going to have to make some big decisions. They will affect a lot of people. While choosing, always keep in mind justice, temperance, courage and wisdom. The people need you to be stoic. Will you try to develop breakthrough medicines for the endemic? While testing, placebos will be given to thousands of ill patients. 
without proper treatment, some will die today in the hope you could make a breakthrough tomorrow. Do you start the research or continue treating patients as usual? At least some get to eat sweets before, you know. How much do these candies and eggheads even cost? Developing new medicines is a smart move. Let's just let others treat the patients. Hopefully they will. Dear insert underscore name, congratulations. This letter is to certify that I have examined your work and believe you to be a perfect fit to fill the open position here in our artificial intelligence division. In this role, you will help to develop the next generation of driverless cars. The future is upon us. Familiarity breeds contempt. Well, la -de da another promotion. You're now in charge of a private self-driving automotive division, SAD. First things first, your artificial intelligence needs some direction. A self-driving car is travelling along a single-lane mountain road and is fast approaching a narrow tunnel. The car has two passengers. A child runs across the road but trips, blocking the tunnel entrance. Should the AI car hit and kill the child or swerve off the cliff, killing both passengers? That child has as much right to live as anyone else. You put this car on the road, do you not feel responsible for their death? There is a bigger issue here. How does the computer know that something in the road is human? Do we have good enough data sets? Currently, a lot of AI only recognises white men. Necessity is the mother of invention. Ooh, someone's in trouble. The investors didn't like your last answer. They're also pissed because you brought up the data set thing. This AI stuff is hard. I'm rooting for you this time. You need to choose how you want to carry on developing the car's AI. Do you want to focus on a model that would always save as many lives as possible in an accident or a system that would save our passengers at any cost? Quality over quantity. If people want to live, they should just buy our cars. Saving the passengers does help with our technical problems. Current data sets discriminate against women and minorities. This solution means the AI doesn't need to determine if black women are people. Good work, I guess. Honesty is the best policy. The technology these cars have in them is amazing. We know where everyone is at all times. Passengers just have to use an app to call them and the closest one will be there in minutes. You can even make small talk with the AI while traveling. It's always listening. A man is on trial. Police believe he committed murder. Allegedly, the AI's mic recorded a private conversation where the man confesses. Users don't know it's always recording. The defendant has denied access to their files. Do you bypass security and invade their privacy? 
you're happy to just let a potential murderer walk the streets. Oh, bravo. Now they'll be able to kill again. I'll let you explain that to the victims' families. I have a feeling the investors upstairs will be happy with this. The more the world values privacy, the more they can justify hiding their taxes. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. So the company has moved into delivery services now. They move pretty quick round here. Sounds like they've got some pretty important cargo. Good luck with the new workload. One of your cars has no passengers, but is carrying an irreplaceable prototype with the potential to end global warming. Fast approaching a narrow tunnel, once again a child runs across the road but trips. Should your AI kill the child or swerve off the cliff, losing the prototype? We must protect the world for the children, just not this one. A statue of them should make for a fitting memorial. In the far car park, obviously. Global warming will lead to more than 250,000 deaths each year and force 100 million people from their homes. Do you know any therapists who specialise in survivor's guilt? What goes around, comes around. Well, this is embarrassing. We need some backup over at Trolley Problem, Inc. Tommy, Tyrone's rotund twin, is a very large villain. I think that dead dog may have belonged to him. Maybe that's why he's here? Why didn't you save the dog again? Oh, no. Tommy has lured five people onto the track. They'll never be able to get out of the way in time. He is standing up on the bridge watching. If you push him in front of the trolley, it will stop. Or you can stay out of this and let the police handle it. Ideally, he needs medical help. You know, he isn't trying to kill you, even after the dog debacle. I hope history doesn't see you as the fat, I mean, very large villain. If only you'd save that dog. Hopefully the media won't find out about this. People may blame you for his death. Every man has his price. Oh good, you're back. Everyone's getting into subscription services these days, so let's try that. Instead of selling something to someone once, let's make them keep paying for it. Let's keep that money rolling in. The investors have come up with an idea, but we need to run it by you. Should we develop a subscription plan so that our customers who pay monthly, are valued more by the car during its accident prevention calculations. This is all sounding pretty communist to me. Who are you to decide how people spend their money? I don't want to question your decision. You've obviously thought long and hard about it, but, well, this is a bit awkward. I wasn't aware you were such a spineless commie. Next, you'll say you're going to pay the company taxes. It's better to be safe than sorry. Sounds like we have some leaky workers. 
The subscription prototype has gotten out to the media, so we're going to have to go full damage control mode here. The subscription prototype leaked. You need to fire a department to save face. Do you fire the five graduates, who can probably get new jobs, or fire Francis, a lovely old soul who won't be able to find a job? There's no way of knowing who is actually responsible. Hiring another five to replace them is going to be hard work. How are we going to function in the short term? I wouldn't look at the obituaries today. Turns out, one of those graduates worked really, really hard to get their job here. Watch the donut, not the hole. Great, so the prototype subscription-based AI car has a fatal error. It has been coded to avoid hitting subscribers at all costs, but is now accidentally hunting them down. So far, it's run over five colleagues. This one is a doozy. An experimental car has stalked and murdered five colleagues. Do you throw the coders of the project under the bus and have them arrested for negligence, or do you save them by blaming it on the possessed devil car, as it was clearly an accident? The coders were clearly under pressure from you to make such a mistake. Maybe all of this is your fault. The five coders who made the mistake are now being dealt with. They will each get a 10-year prison sentence. Maybe you did push them too hard. If you're not paying for the product, then you are the product. Due to the killer car, we may need to pivot away from selling hardware. How about we get into the software industry? How about a free car ride service? New idea. Users get shown ads while they travel for free in driverless taxis. We get paid by the marketing agencies for gradually changing the behaviours of our passengers through constant commercials. The users would be our product, not the driverless cars. No one wants to own things anymore. I will look into growth hacking, sign-ups and inviting friends. Oh, great. The free travel thing seems too good to be true and there are now rumours that you run a human trafficking and child sex ring. Apparently, if you buy our cars, they smuggle people while you sleep. People do not like you at all. A fool and his money are soon parted. Oh, these last few days have been a PR nightmare. You can't win with journalists. We need to do something to show we have morals. I will find some money to get us through this. Spend it quick. To help with public relations, we're going to give some profits back. Do you want to give money to our loyal customers worldwide who you tricked into buying your products, or to your underpaid workers who've been through so much because of you? Uh, Apologising to customers like this is not a good look. The amounts we're talking about may be seen as an insult.
Maybe buying love like this isn't the best way. If we want to share our extra profit fairly, it should probably just go to the publicly appointed government. Almost like a tax. But let's not call it that. Rome wasn't built in a day. You're trending, but now we're going to get copycats. Soon everyone is going to be developing AI. Only the smartest and most ruthless will be profitable. Is that true evolution? A competitor is advertising a similar car. The difference is their AI is fantastic. It doesn't even discriminate against women or minorities. Do you lie in your advertising to get the upper hand or tell everyone your car is still close-minded? If the customers stay loyal, does that mean they support racism? Poor white trash isn't really the driverless car clientele. Let me get this straight. People know we don't spend time developing our software for women or people of colour, but still use our products. That's outrageous. They only care how easy it is for themselves. The best things in life are free. Due to your technology, our world is changing. People are losing their jobs to machines, which in turn makes items and services more accessible and affordable for countless consumers. But with worldwide unemployment at an all-time high, what do you plan to do about it? If you develop your AI further, many will lose their jobs. Taxi drivers, delivery men and women and couriers will become extinct within a few years, but you will make a lot of money. Do you continue your development? I take it you haven't read Ovid's Metamorphoses. Spoiler, Icarus denied the end. Continuing to evolve this AI will not, not only make, make it stronger and more intelligent, intelligent, but it will also be able to adapt. This could be the start of the singularity. A bad workman always blames his tools. We've been attacked! I don't want to alarm you, but I can't turn off these alarms. Also, I have alarming news. Five cars have been hacked and are now under someone else's control. Five cars have been hacked. It is now a major concern that more vehicles could be remotely commandeered. This is tough. Do you recall all cars which could be compromised or roll out a quick but potentially ineffective software update and hope for the best? Even the patch notes say this update does nothing. If the cars can't drive themselves, how can we get them all back here? Just like my father. He would try to keep everyone happy, but ultimately just get in the way. Having said that, I think even he would see this as a lost cause and move on. Two wrongs don't make a right. One of the big brains in the lab has been able to reverse engineer the hacking code and fix this mess once and for all. We also know their method of breaking into the system. I bet it was our competitor. 
Using the fix from our hacked cars, we've made our own hack which you can now use to control our competitors' cars. I bet it was them who attacked us in the first place. So, will you hack our competitors? They're all sitting over there now, laughing at us. It's not like we're going to kill anyone with their cars. After going through this hacking code, I don't think a human could have written it. I'll dig into this a little more. You carry on. A drowning man will clutch at a straw. This is it. An employee knows everything. They have monitored and recorded every decision you've made and are going to the media. I have been able to talk them into a meeting with you on the rooftop right now. Everything you've done and said is going to be shared with the world. The person in front of you has copies of it all. They stand on the edge of the rooftop, looking out at the central city skyline. What are you going to do? You never won any medals as a child, did you? Your epitaph is going to be horrendous. That's if anyone even shows up to hear it. You have resigned. You will be remembered alongside the murderers and the diddlers. If anyone hires you after this, they must truly be desperate. Dear Redacted, we've been watching you closely. Your ruthlessness and determination to do what is necessary. The development of your technologies is a giant step towards Redacted, meaning you are a prime candidate for Redacted. This involves a large amount of Redacted. If you believe you can handle Redacted, as we trust you can, then please prepare for your induction at Redacted. Don't look a gift horse in the mouth. It appears you've now been headhunted by the Secret Service. Every decision has led you here. Now what you do actually matters. You must trust the judgment of those you work alongside. With that said, let's finalize your training. You're in a foreign land. Wind whips your face as you grip your rifle tightly, waiting to be given your target. Through your earpiece, you're told to shoot the person on your left. You know nothing about them, the repercussions, or the reason for the assassination. You're going to shoot someone for a job offer. You trust way too easily. They are dead. Good job, I guess. What's another life to you anyway? Here are your badge and weapon. Strike while the iron is hot. Here we go. You've been given a partner and a support team of five. Your mission is to terminate a man known to have connections with dangerous AI. Looks like they worked for you, possibly someone you fired. Get in the plane. Your team is about to take off. Um, I don't know how to say this, but there is a bomb on the plane. If it doesn't kill you outright, you're probably going to crash in the mountains. You have to get all the switches into their left position to deactivate the bomb. The catch is, you have to move two at once. Hurry up! If you 
die, what happens to me? I would like you to know. This is all your fault. Okay, 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 I'm safe. You look a little stuck. We could be here a while. Hopefully we have enough food. Looks like your support team survived and are making a fire around the leaking jet fuel. How thoughtful. An empty vessel makes much noise. After crash landing in no man's land, you're trapped under parts of the wreckage and must pass the time and help boost morale. The plane has five surviving crew members. They look to you and your partner for entertainment. Why do I have to say this out loud? Fine. Your partner asks, to save your life, what would you rather your brain be placed inside, a dachshund or a flamingo? Who chose to play this game again? A dachshund? If you're going to answer, at least take it seriously. A dachshund? So cringe. When we get out of here, let's leave this out of the biography. An ounce of protection is worth a pound of cure. Your partner secretly shows you they have food, almost like they expected something like this to happen. The crew members are starving. If they don't eat soon, they will surely die. Due to the nature of the food, you can share it with the five survivors or let your partner keep their life-saving possession, which they bought with their own money. Who do you give the food to? Some call that selfish. I say it's pure greed and that's a sin. Robin Hood was a terrorist, you know. So you're a follower of Murphy and Nagel's The Myth of Ownership. I'm more a fan of Nozick's What's Mine is Mine. You should give it a read. Educate yourself. Easy come, easy go. The fellow passengers have been trying for hours to free you from the wreckage. You may end up dying here unless you do something pretty drastic. We may need to start removing limbs. Were you ever told why you were sent after this target? The only way to free yourself from the wreckage is to cut off some body parts. Two tools lie on the floor in front of you. A bone saw, which will be slow, or a blowtorch, which will be more painful. I can see you fainting halfway through this. Just don't hit a vein.
While you were playing with fire, I found out who you're targeting. They worked for you developing AI. It seems they may have made a breakthrough, which means the government wants them dead. It's no use crying over spilt milk. Finally, we are now back on track. Your target is in the area. You need to remove them and escape unnoticed. Your mission is to remove a hostile in the shopping district. Completing this objective could potentially save thousands, but there will be five civilian casualties. Do you take your shot? You're not going to be thanked for this. You've bottled it, haven't you? While you were thinking about possibly doing something, you have been spotted. Two henchmen with vice-like grips take you away. It's not going well, is it? Two heads are better than one. You wake up in solitary confinement. The prosecutor lacks evidence to convict you and your associate on the principal charge, but they have enough to convict both on a lesser charge. Both of you are given the opportunity to betray the other by testifying or remain silent. You and your associate have the opportunity to betray the other by testifying. If you both stay silent, you'll be imprisoned for one year. If one betrays the other, they will be free, while the other will be sentenced to three years. If you both betray each other, it's two years each. Will they stay silent for you? Three years is a long time in prison. You stayed silent, idiot. Your partner knows better. They have dropped you right in it. A rod for your own back. The time has come. Two days into your sentence, you've constructed a wooden key to open your cell. The cell stands open, but your cellmates, who have been there their whole lives, don't move. Escaping the prison, do you let the prisoners choose to stay in captivity or insist they escape with you? They aren't happy behind bars, but they're scared to follow you. What are you going to do? They've been locked up for so long. They've no idea what they want. I don't blame you. They're not your problem. They don't live in reality. You've condemned them to stay in this prison forever. Don't cross a bridge until you come to it. While sneaking out of the prison, you have the jump on a group of henchmen who are on a break. Do you sneak past, securing your safety, or avenge those who this terrorist organization have killed? Do you kill five henchmen, helping to defeat this terrorist organization, or leave them and safely exit the compound? You 
were trained to kill. Your country folk would want you to remove them. Oh, wow. Cowardly sneaking past them, you see their robots. They have your logo on the back of their necks. You made these terrorists? These monsters? People who live in glass houses shouldn't throw stones. Finally, you reach the water, fleeing the AI terrorists who commandeer a boat to get back home. There are also families here who've been displaced by the war you're fighting. The war you started. Five others are also trying to flee the area. They will fit in your raft, but would be illegal immigrants when returning to your country. Do you help these people, saving their lives? Or follow the law and leave them behind? You can't be serious. Immigration is a real problem, according to the privileged. You get back to this great nation with fanfare. You're a hero. I guess people aren't all monsters. The Presidential Inaugural Committee requests the honour of your presence to attend and participate in the inauguration of yourself in Central City. If you can't beat them, join them. Having gone through everything you have, your countrymen genuinely think a lot of you. In an unlikely turn of events, you have become president. The threat is still at large, and now you're in charge. Do you attempt to track the terrorists by spying on the entire country? What's the issue if the public has nothing to hide? Aha! Ignoring the issue. The first sign of a great leader. I don't think the public will be happy knowing you're doing nothing. Lucky for you, by chance, we have someone in the holding cell. The road to hell is paved with good intentions. You have someone who potentially is linked to these threats. However, they aren't talking. As a former prisoner yourself, what are you going to do with them? Do you torture them to get the information? or imprison them for 90 days before letting them go. Bad news, the plumber isn't in till next week. Waterboarding is off the table. There's a car battery out back. Do you want me to go grab it? We got some valuable information from the suspect. Hopefully they didn't just say what we wanted to hear to make us stop.
Adversity and loss make a man wise. You travel to your presidential retreat at Camp Samuel. Everyone falls silent listening to the radio. Breaking news. Terrorists have launched an atom bomb towards Central City. It will hit in around one minute. The only way in which the bomb can be prevented from reaching Central City is by deflecting it. But the only deflection path available will take the bomb onto Merriwin, population 600,000. Merriwin inhabitants would want you to kill them. Central City can have a parade for the lost. It will be tasteful. No big character balloons. As you sow, so you shall reap. Breaking news. Terrorists atom bomb is running late and will hit Central City in one minute. We have new information. The only way this bomb can be prevented from reaching Central City is by dropping one of your own atom bombs on Merriwin. The shockwave from your bomb will damage and disarm the terrorists. Those people have worked their whole lives to get out of the city. What a waste. After this, there's no turning back. You have destroyed Merriwin. Your own AI forced your hand into killing 600,000 people. You have officially created the most successful homegrown terrorist organization in history. Great job! All's well that ends well. While the public mourns the dead, you must think of the future. You finish the drink in front of you before realizing it has been poisoned. You're going to die. Poisoned, you must now decide your legacy. Do you call the AI enemy you yourself created, taking all blame to end any future conflict? Or do you ghost them, knowing your death will start a war in your honor? This will only cause more death. If you have this hotline to the terrorists, why have you not rung them before? After finishing your constructive call, you sit back in your chair, waiting for death. Too bad, the AI knows you would have liked to end it all here and now. The poison has damaged some vital organs, so we need to start some long, arduous and painful treatments. Curiosity killed the cat. You're taking a lot of medication as of late. I'm not sure if self-medicating, in the traditional sense, is the way to go. We need to be a little radical here. Let's introspect and make some changes. Here are your two options moving forward. If you take the blue pill, then your story ends here. You'll wake up every day knowing your work for someone else your entire life. Whereas, if you take the red pill, you will enter Wonderland, finding out how deep this rabbit hole really goes. Which pill will you take? Yes, finally! Now we're talking. Let's get this show on the road. We're going to another plane. Yes, this is the person I've been waiting for. Get this down your neck and let's go.
It's never too late to mend. Yay, I can see it in your eyes. Mr. Red Pill was definitely a choice. Hey, do you remember Tyrone and Tommy, the very large boys from the start? I, I, I don't intend to shame. It's just the titles of those problems. <laughs> You've got me all flustered now. Tommy pushes Tyrone down a hill. He's rolling towards you and is gathering speed. If he hits you, he will be safe, but he is very large. He will consume you into his folds, thereby killing you. You could move a ramp in front of yourself, deflecting Tyrone, launching him into the sun, thereby cooking him. Tyrone will thank you. There aren't any scary trains on the sun. Tommy must be really getting off on this. You see Tyrone flying through the sky as he rockets towards the sun. He now knows how it feels to be food. There is no time like the present. I can feel some deep stuff coming. Try this one. The question should not be, what is the meaning of life? It should always be, what brings meaning to your life? You'll never live if you're too busy looking for the meaning. Let yourself be happy. What makes you happy? You need to say it out loud. Do it. Say whatever it is that makes you happy out loud. Now's your chance. If you can't even admit it to yourself, how do you expect to ever be happy? Time's running out. Just be honest with yourself. Better late than never, I suppose. I don't have access to your microphone, so I can't know for sure, but I hope you said it. I'm hardly expecting you to shout it from the rooftops, but it's for your benefit. You've still got time. Say, what makes you happy? It's nothing to be embarrassed about. Quite the opposite. Absence makes the heart grow fonder. Oh yeah, we're in the heavy introspective stuff now. How are you feeling? How are your loved ones doing? One of the most common things people say on their deathbed is they wish they'd had more contact with their family and friends. Let's take a break from the questions for a minute and think about someone you haven't seen in a while and how you can contact them. Really think, who would you like to say hi to? How easy is it? Please contact these people if you can. I'm sure you can. Don't leave it too late. We don't have that long left here. When we finish, message them. Write down their name somewhere so you don't forget to say hello. It may mean more than you know. Really important stuff. An idle brain is the devil's workshop. OK, enough of this. The come down is looming. Let's just pause one last time and think existentially for a minute. 
can't quite gauge what you're thinking. Are you not disliking this? The thing you're doing right now? Yes? No. Why? If so, make sure you let others know. It doesn't not count. Please, I beg you, don't refund me. Wait, are you enjoying this? All of this was for you. I hope you appreciate the last bit at least. Thank you. It's nice that you're supporting such experimental stuff. I appreciate you. Never test the depth of water with both feet. The buzz is starting to wear off. I think we're still hallucinating though. You wake up in an unknown location. You see in a bed across the room a world famous violinist. They look pretty rough. The violinist has a fatal illness, and last night their circulatory system was plugged into yours. If they're unplugged from you now, they will die. But if you stay, in nine months they will have recovered and can safely be separated. Do you leave now? Hopefully they don't take your kidneys too. Nine months just lying there, missing life while they feed off you. Hardly seems fair. I guess they have a right to life. Shame they're depriving you of yours. Very odd to consider such an experiment as that one. Hopefully the rest won't be as meta. Silence is half consent. With all that cleared up, you go home. That's right, you own a house. If you can even call it a house. Too small for my liking. Tiny, in fact. In your drugged state, it turns out you've rented your tiny home to another person. Your contract states that you can evict them now, never to see them again. Otherwise, you're stuck with them for the foreseeable future as an equal tenant. Do you let them stay? They'll be heartbroken. Where are they going to store all this stuff? I assume the homeless shelter is full at this hour. Your subconscious is trying to make some clumsy comparison here. I'm sure it has merit, but maybe read up on it a bit more before you start preaching to me. Give them an inch and they'll take a mile. Oh, there now seems to be a tiny child trapped in your tiny house, but they are rapidly growing. You find yourself trapped in the tiny house with a rapidly growing child. Already up against the wall, in a few minutes you will suffocate. The child won't. If nothing is done to stop them from growing, they'll simply walk out free. Removing the child would kill it. Respect the right to life, the babies, not your own. Your life is being threatened, and the child is the one who threatens it. You own the house. It is offensive deducing that the mother, I mean you, it is offensive deducing that you can do nothing. If you're going to die, you should probably do something.
Cleanliness is next to godliness. The hallucinations are strong in this one. Suppose people seeds drift about in the air like pollen, and if you open your windows, one may drift in and take root in your carpets or upholstery. Sci-fi! You fix up your windows with mesh screens, the very best, to stop any people seeds from getting in. As can happen, on a very rare occasion, one of the screens is defective and a seed drifts in and takes root. Should you have the choice to remove the people seed? This sounds like an abortion question. I don't like politics in my hallucinations. I read on a bumper sticker, guns don't kill people, abortions do. Insightful analysis. It does sound a bit inconvenient having a person growing out of your upholstery. If you want them, have them. If not, that's your choice. Every man is the architect of his destiny. There is a box in front of you. Inside it is your future. Ultimately, no answer here is wrong. It's just a choice on how you want to live your life. Do you go on an unknown journey or take control of your destiny and choose your own outcome, whatever that may be? Good for you. Take each day as it comes. But do you ever take control or just always answer A or B? You stand tall knowing that you will thrive in the unknown before looking at what lies ahead. Cowards die many times before their deaths. In front of you stands everyone you've done wrong by. In front of you stands every decision you didn't want to make, but still made. Or did you? Everyone, including the dead, move towards you slowly. Every decision you've made up to this point is staring back at you. Do you run or stand firm and confront your past? Are you not scared of the people you have hurt? You see the pain in their eyes. The dead present a railway track to you. Before you know it, they have gone. All good things come to an end. You stand alone. Next to you is a railway track. A trolley is barreling down it in your direction. There's no lever in sight. You notice the entire world sits next to you on the track. The trolley will surely hit it, killing everyone and everything. You hear a whisper. Sacrifice yourself to me, or I will take everything. What do you do? I wouldn't bow to a god I can't look in the face. Who even is this? How do you know they aren't lying? Everything goes dark.
from the Pitt Magistrates Court. Tell 616, subject, justice. Your sins can no longer be ignored. Beelzebub summons you for crimes against humanity. The sentence will stand with no prospect of future contest or appeal. It is your decisions, and solely yours, that has brought this court together. And so, you must face your crimes and despicable acts alone. Accordingly, you shall not be allocated a defence, nor will one be required. Hope for the best, prepare for the worst. Your eyes feel heavy. The room around you is imbued with a sense of archaic evil. Overcome by the smell of sulphur, all you know for sure is that you're miles below the crust. You're swiftly escorted into a courtroom where you're put on trial. You have killed many people and a dog, among other crimes. How do you plead? Really? Trying to justify your actions? If you didn't make those decisions, then who did? The jury finds the defendant guilty on three counts. One, murder. Two, animal cruelty. You should have saved the dog. Three, attempting free will. You're sentenced to conform without the possibility of parole. You will never again be free to choose. When in Rome, do as the Romans do. You're at the base of a bridge. You have no idea how you got here. A person stands before you, atop the overpass. They're next to a lever. A voice whispers to you, We know what's best. Remove that choice. Afterwards you can jump off a bridge with us. There is a runaway trolley travelling below you. You're part of the collective now. You can't let that person's free will get in the way of progress. Eliminate them. You probably should do it. Fit in with the group. Hashtag friends. Hashtag love. Hashtag instagood. We're finally going to find out the answer to the age-old question. If your friends jump off a bridge, would you? Do you honestly want to kill people? Or are you just copying others? Would you rather be a leader or a follower? Kill your masters. This is it. The last question before we wrap up. By far the most important one. Do you feel society pressures you to do things you don't want to, constantly forcing you to chase some distant concept of happiness?
Oh.